This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Have you ever taken a portrait where on the day you just thought, wow, this lighting is really beautiful, but you got back home and you loaded that same file up onto your computer and took a look, and suddenly the image just looks flat and dull and boring. Where did all that good lighting go? Well, I think a lot of the answer comes down to the raw file itself. You see, raw files are designed to collect as much information as possible, to protect as much of the dynamic range as it can. All those shadows all the way through to the brightest highlights and holding all that together in one. But that means that when you load that up onto your computer, depending on your raw processor of choice, the image can just look a little flat and the contrast and juiciness has gone out of that lighting. From there, we have a choice. We can either just jack up the contrast slider and hope for the best or start pulling curves around hoping to bring some of that contrast back. Or we can go to work and start to shape that light in post to finesse it and bring back the light that we were attempting to capture on the day. It's important to say that we're not talking about changing the light on the face in post because that will always just look fake and odd. It's still our responsibility as good photographers to capture the light in camera that we want on the day. And that goes for you, whether you're a photographer who shoots in a studio and you create that light using strobes on the day from scratch, or you're a natural light photographer who's out and about looking for that good light and placing your subject in the right position so that light and shadow sculpts the face. The dodging and burning techniques I'm going to show you today are not about rescuing poor images. They're just about finishing the image off that you captured and accentuating the light that you caught in the camera on the day and making sure that you're conveying it to your viewer in the way that your mind's eye saw it. I also want to caution you, just like I did on our video on eyes, that these are techniques that you're going to be tempted to overuse and push too far. I know I certainly did when I started out in portrait photography, and sometimes I go back and cringe at images I made back then, and I realize how fake and odd I was making them look, because I was just too heavy-handed. But if you learn to use these techniques gently and lightly, you're going to add a subtle painterly quality to your portraits, but still keep them looking really natural, and you're going to tighten up the light on the face so that you're going to accentuate the shape that you captured on that day. So with that less is more caveat in place, let's jump in. So what I want to do is work out what the lighting is doing in this image. I obviously know what lights I placed where, so I could easily just go ahead and start. But let me just show you a little trick on how you can work out how a portrait is lit. If you zoom in onto one of the eyes here on the right hand side, you can see on the right hand side here, this is my light source. It was a probably about a one and a half meter soft lighter and with a uh, big monoblock lighter, I think it was a Bowens. Uh, down below here you've got another light source, this is just a circular reflector underneath and here you've got the, the side here of what is actually out of frame a much bigger white reflector. So we've got a reflector below the eye, a reflector to the side just to fill in the shadows on the side of the face and a big light on the side here. So when we zoom out we can tell that the main light source, the key light source in this image is actually coming from the right hand side of my subject. It's this big light source that we saw up here. This is where the key light is coming from. Nice big soft light source. Then if we go, let me just change my pen color here. Then if we go over to, let's use a yellow. There's another light source in this image. This is actually a two light shot. And we can see actually that there's a, a light that's outside of the frame on this side, behind, on the, on the, behind the subject on camera left side. And this was actually a big, a uh, gridded strip box from memory and that's lighting up the back of the hair over here and this side of the face from behind so it's not wrapping around the face. So those are the lights that I actually use to capture uh, this image and we're just going to accentuate what we have in this shot. So now that you've seen what we've got, let's just take that layer off. What you want to teach yourself is how to see light in an image and how it's striking the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint on this image just so you can see. Obviously, I don't do this anymore because I've gotten fairly good at seeing where the light's coming from. But this is a good exercise to do when you start. It's just to go here and work out where is light hitting the face. So with this key light on the right hand side, it's definitely hitting the hairline over here. There's nice highlights. It's hitting uh, this forehead over here and that moves across over here as well onto that kind of brow. You can see on the right side of the nose it's hitting and this little nostril here, there's a little bit more of a highlight there as well. This whole cheekbone is lit really nicely on this side 
Uh, this side of the chin is lit here. You've got this little light on the right hand side of the lower lip. And then you've got these lines lit here and then down the side here as well. You've got a soft highlight which is wrapping around. This is a nice Rembrandt light, so it does bleed over a little bit. This is just a gentle highlight on this cheek, but it's just a small one. Uh, and then we can see that we've got, with our other light source, let's change our pen color again uh, to that yellow. Let's work with this uh, rim light source from the back left here. You can see that it's highlighting this side of the hair on the back here. It's highlighting the temple over here and the ear and then it's wrapping around this cheekbone and down the jawline over here. So that is uh, the light that we actually have on our subject, key light in white, rim light in yellow. And now let's just for sake of argument, just so you can just see what light's doing and teach yourself how to do this, let's change our color again. Let's make it a, let's make it a dark blue this time. Something quite strong, here we go. So now we wanna see where are the shadows created by these two light sources. Where is light less present and creating shape? Because shadows on a face are your friend. That's what creates the shape and three-dimensionality and roll-off. So you can see all up here, this is the shadow caught between these two lights. Wraps over the forehead here. You can see around the eyes, around this left side of the nose, under this cheekbone here on the left side, definitely underneath the nose and around the nostrils, around this side of uh, the chin. And you could argue a little bit down here as well, I suppose. And maybe even just under here, there's a little bit as well. So that's our little map. You can see white is our key light highlights. Yellow is our rim light highlights. And blue is where our shadows are present. And we want to teach ourselves how to see where light's falling because this is going to give us our map for dodging and burning. What I'm going to do is create four curves layers. One, uh, this is just, just going to your adjustment layers underneath here. Two three, and four. Bottom layer here, I'm gonna call dodge. Uh, second layer up here, I'm gonna call burn. This is gonna create our shape. And third layer, I'm gonna call uh, BG for background. And the top layer here, I'm just gonna call light. Let's start with, let's turn all these off. Let's start with this bottom layer. So for dodging, I've told you in other tutorials, uh, there's loads of ways to dodge and burn. You can use the actual dodge and burn tool. You can use curves pulled. You can use levels pulled and mask all that stuff in. The way I like to do it is just with this blank curves layer. Don't touch the actual curves. Just come and change your blending mode to screen. Brightens the whole image up. I like using blending modes like this because it keeps a lot of detail while, while brightening things up. So. Uh, with that selected, with my mask selected, I'm just going to go Control or Command I on a Mac, inverts the mask and turns everything uh, to black on the mask, which removes the effect, and we're going to paint it in subtly. Then I'm going to come over here to my brush tool, make sure the foreground selected to white. Nice soft brush, 0% hardness, and I'm going to change my flow to 3% because I'm going to paint this effect in gradually. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start painting in where those highlights are falling with my square bracket keys to change my brush size. I'm just going to start painting in those highlights. So I want the highlights on the hair, the highlights on this side of the forehead, and just making sure to sort of fade it off as it sort of fades into shadows as well, just underneath the eyebrow here, and the side of the nose, and just the little bits on the nostrils as well. I'm going to brush around this cheekbone to make that pop on the lips here, especially those tops of the lips and around this side where the light is. Uh, the little highlights on the lower lip here, I definitely want to pop those. Right hand side of the chin, I'm going a bit faster than I normally would. And then I want to move over onto the left side here, this little highlight that's wrapping around, just pop that a little bit. And then on my left side, I'm not going to do too much. Honestly, this uh, rim light is probably stronger than it should be for my, st my style of portraits anyway, so I'm not going to brighten that up too much. But if this was a softer highlight, I would probably just pop that a little bit as well. And because we don't want to make the face look fake, we also want to make sure that we do the clothes as well and match everything up. So let's do the highlights on the clothes as well. I'm just popping where the highlights are falling on the clothes just to bring it out a little bit. If I turn this on and off now, you can see what that's done. Can you see how that's pop the light that's already hitting my subject from this right hand side. It might be a little strong, so we'll dial that back in a minute if we want to, but let's leave it there for now. So let's move up to our burn layer. So for burn, turn this curves layer on, change the blending mode of the second, this second layer to multiply, which is gonna make that quite dark, but keep all the detail. 
Control or Command I with the mask selected removes that effect. And again, uh, brush tool, white foreground, soft brush, 0% hardness, 3% flow. We're gonna paint this in slowly. So now remember, everywhere we painted blue, we wanna start bringing those shadows in with this burn layer. And just wanna move that across top of the forehead there. Give a nice transition between where the highlights are and where the shadows are. So I'm deepening down the shadows, the side of the nose, underneath those nostrils and on this lip side here, maybe the underneath of the lip as well, the side of the chin, underneath the chin. And that I think should be fairly good. Might wanna just, just a little bit on this side underneath uh, this cheekbone as well because the light was hitting 45 degrees above. So it would cast a slightly uh, darker area underneath, creates a bit more shape as well. So that looks pretty good to me. And then what I'm gonna do is come down here and do the same to the clothes. Remember, give everything the same treatment or the face will start to stand out as if you've done a lot more work on it. You wanna sell this by making sure that you are giving the whole image the same treatment. And that way it feels like a properly motivated light that's coming from the right direction to hit, hitting everything, not just the face. So this burn layer, let's turn it on and off, see what it's done. So you see that it's just brought those shadows in and tucked them in a bit more and accentuate them. So both of these layers are too strong. Let's turn off my burn layer, come down to my dodge layer and take it down to 0% opacity. I wanna get this right before I move on. So that's taking the effect off. Now I'm gonna dial it up until I kind of like what it's doing, but it's not too strong. So I'm gonna put that at about 73. Turn my burn layer on, it's too strong. I can see the effect, I don't wanna see it. It should just be subtle. So turn it off, and then I'm just gonna dial it up slowly until I like what it's doing to the shadows on the face and about 70% looks good. So let's just see what we've done so far. If I zoom in a little bit, hold down Alt and hit this bottom eye uh, dropper or eye icon on this background layer, turning off everything we've done, and putting it back on. Can you see how that's shaping the light on that face just with the way that we've done that uh, global dodge and burn on the face to bring out the light that we already created. Remember, we're not creating new light, we're just accentuating what we already have. Next thing I'm gonna do is come up to my background layer, turn it on. I'm gonna change this blending mode to multiply again because I'm gonna burn this layer. I'm gonna go Control or Command I on a Mac to remove that effect, exactly the same process again. And this time, I'm gonna zoom out a bit more and I am going to have a nice big brush. Remember that my light is coming from this direction. That's my key light, okay? So I want to darken down everything else. And I could just sort of create a vignette, but often when you create a vignette, you can see the shape that you've created and it doesn't really sell as well. You want something that's a little more organic. So I like to paint in my vignettes so that it feels a little bit more realistic. So I'm gonna start just brushing around my subject to darken down the outside of where that light, I don't want it to appear as much. So around the clothes as well, especially on the left-hand side here. And I'm being quite rough and ready because I want it to feel loose. I don't want it to feel too heavy because then it won't, it won't sell it. So now that is definitely too strong. Oh, I can see a little light bit up there I want to get rid of. That's too strong, obviously. So what I want to do again is take this down to 0% opacity and I wanna start dialing it up until it's just tucking that light in around the face and drawing your attention to where I want your eyes to be. And that looks pretty good, 43%. And now the last layer, turn it on, and I'm gonna use a screen blending mode on this curves layer because I wanna uh, dodge this effect. Then with the mask selected, Control or Command I to invert that mask to black, exactly the same again. Big soft brush. I wanna do a big sweep across here as if the light's coming in from this side. So big brush square bracket keys to change my brush size. And I'm gonna do one big sweep down the side here like this. Just a little rough sweep over here. Just done something subtle, can you see that? It's just lifted the light on that side to kind of motivate as if the light's coming in from that right hand side. So you can see we've made quite a big difference. I'm gonna turn everything off. And what we've done is we've first of all added that dodge layer to pop where the light's hitting naturally. The burn layer, which has just deepened some of those shadows and shaped that light. The background, burning just to shape the light around the subject, bring in a bit more darkness and make you look at the face before anything else. And that last light layer, which is just motivating that light coming back in from that side, nice huge brush just to create that sweep. And if I hold Alt and hit the eye icon on that background layer, you can see the before and the after, before 
and after. And that's how we shape light using dodge and burn on our portraits. I hope this has helped. Remember, in this series so far, we've covered natural skin retouching and accentuating eyes and portraits, and today, shaping the light on the face. And still to come, we're gonna talk about changing the color and texture of your backgrounds to add interest and separation from your subject, and also how to finish off your image by finessing your color, contrast, and sharpening. So if you don't wanna miss those, make sure you're subscribed and following along. And just a little bit of housekeeping before I go to say that Collection 5 is on sale. 45 black and white and 45 color images that I made from last year, but these are limited editions and half the stock is already gone. So if you want a copy of this before they run out, don't wait too long, I'll leave a link down below. And The Meaning in the Making is still available online wherever you buy books. Thank you so much to all of you who have purchased. I've just started getting sales reports in and blown away by how many of you have got this. And thank you so much for all your messages about how much this book is meaning to you. For all of you who've read it and enjoyed it, if you want to help me spread the word about this book, please just head back online wherever you bought the book and remember to leave a rating and a review. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them myself for over a decade now for all my work online. One of the things I love about Squarespace are their templates because personally, I want a very clean and minimal look to my website where my images are doing the talking and the design isn't actually distracting. But Squarespace have a collection of very minimal, mature looking templates put together by professional designers so you can just load up your images and your text and your videos and whatever else you want there and the design gets out of the way and pushes your work front and center. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.